Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct, and I'm here looking at a lovely tea. I think you're gonna like it. It's called the Not Front Tea, and I wanted to show you, this was a sample that I found on Beyond Yoga, and it's kind of like resort wear. If you like to run around in your sweats and you like to have cute little tops to go with it. This is an example where they put the knot in the back of the tea. So you can put it in the front or on your side or straight in the middle of your tee. But so when you're knitting any uh, any t-shirts that are bottom up, you can use this technique and put this nice little knot in your work. This is the pattern that I'm I'm knitting from. It's called the knot front tee and is by Carrie Bloom. Um, oh, Carrie Bloomer. Um, and it looks like that. Is and or what? it's a paid for pattern found on Ravelry and she has it in a DK weight and a fingering weight. So just be careful about which one you want to buy. I think I bought the fingering weight one and ended up using sport weight yarn. <laughs> uh, you know how it goes. <laughs> um, but it's a really cute design, super simple to do. And I just started mine last night and it looks like this. I'm using some lovely Malabrigo yarn that I had in my closet. And it's just, you construct the tee from the back where you do some ribbing and then you start making the front panels that are gonna be the knot, where the knot is tied. And it looks like that. Hey Kelly, people yeah. are coming online, they're saying hi. Good um, morning, everyone. Florida. It's so nice to have you with me. And yep. I'm, I found this cute little t-shirt. A lot of t-shirts, sometimes in knitting, they can be kind of dated designs. So I saw this one, I went, you know, that's kind of cute. <laughs> it's kind of a trendy little um, tee. And she has it in short sleeve or three quarter sleeve or long sleeve, you can make it. And like I said, she has it in different weights, but it is a paid for pattern and I found it on Ralvary. Tell them what you did last night. What did I do last night? You were watching that movie, Mission Impossible. Oh, yeah. And you saw that you had me take a picture on the TV. Oh, yeah. I was watching Mission Impossible and I saw a cute design for a hat. I'm like, honey, can you take a picture of that? <laughs> Every time I see cute knitwear that I like, I like to take a picture of it because I, I can recreate it for later. It's and the scene so, of the lady in Russia. Right? Yeah, it's a, the Russian lady, yeah, on yeah. Mission Impossible 4. It was good good movie Which one was it? Four? <laughs> yeah Two? four okay. yeah mm -hmm. yeah so i i like to when i'm knitting i don't know if any of you out there like to watch movies while you're knitting um it just makes the time go by and it's it's something to do it's kind of like a little event that you can do that's fun <laughs> so all of you out there i don't know what you're working on if you want to post it in the comment section you get entered to win a lovely prize and for this last week we had some sueno tweed and this is by haiku or scassel and let me tell you what it's made from it's made from 69 percent superwash merino 16 percent viscose which is from bamboo and then 15 um, uh, percent viscose flex so this bamboo merino wool blend, I don't know if you've ever tried this Wino tweed, but it's quite lovely. I like these two colors. And I think the winning color for this week was the purple color. Yeah, I really like it. I've made quite a few things from that. And then I was thinking for this week, since it, we're getting it into summer and it's a little bit warmer, this, if you haven't tried the Comfort DK by Barocco, it is an acrylic yarn that is machine washable. And I thought we could choose between a purple or a blue. And you Which can see how lovely. Blue, uh, um, this one's purple okay. and this one's blue. And it's an acrylic yarn and you can see it's not shiny. And um, it is super comfortable when you knit with it. You have no idea that it's an acrylic. It's 50% um, super fine nylon and 50% fine acrylic, it says. But it's the best um, acrylic blend yarn that I've used so far. I really, really like this Comfort DK. Um, and they have it in different weights. They have it in a fingering weight and a worsted weight. So it's pretty cool. So I was thinking, um, all you guys have to do is vote and let me know which color you think would be the best color for the winner for next week. And then we can get that in the mail. And any winner who wins, all they have to do is get in contact with customer service at Alpaca Direct and give us your shipping address so that we can send it out in the mail to you. 
So this tea was very intriguing to me. And um, I really like the idea of having a, uh, a tee or a shorter sleeve shirt that you don't have to tuck in. It's just, I don't know, it's super cute. And, uh, you know, a lot of people like to wear leggings. Um, I like to wear the sweatpants. <laughs> so wearing this kind of tee is kind of nice. And I like the ones that are kind of like a cross between a sweatpant and a legging. They're kind of cozy. It's sort of like um, wearing pajamas out in public, <laughs> if you can get away with that. So, so I thought we'd take a look at this uh, twist tutorial and see if we can take a look at how um, easy it is to do the twist. So you can see on mine, on, on my sample here, I have um, knit the back. Let me get that hair off of there. So this is the back of the sweater, right? And it's going up the back. And then we picked up stitches along the side here. And now we're knitting this front. And what it's going to be is the knot is going to be in the front here. And the ribbing will be in the back. So this is the side seam. And then you'll have another side seam where you pick up stitches over on this side over here. And then you bring it together and do that. So here was my little tiny sample of what I had. And the yarns are kind of like a mess right now. So this is the back part of your sweater or tee. And then we picked up stitches along here and knit in that direction. And we picked up stitches and knit along in this other direction. Let me unfold it so you can see what it looks like. So what are you showing in here? It's how to make a knot in your tee. If you want to do a bottom-up tee, mm -hmm. you can add a knot to your knitting and make it look like um, this trendy little tops that I showed you. Okay. So see, here's the two, two things here, right? Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to show you how easy it is to cross them. And so in the pattern, they have you put stitch markers. So from here in between these little sections, you're not going to be picking up stitches because if you do, then there's not enough fabric to actually twist it. So what the pattern has you do is you take this left hand side and you bring it over that right hand side and be careful not to lose your <coughs> <clears throat> you don't want to lose your stitches off your needles. It tells you to actually use a double point, but I like using another a circular because you can knit right off of it. And all you do is you twist it all the way around, trying to get rid of all your extra. Don't do like I did and get <clears throat> all these extra strands of yarn in the way. So this left-hand side goes up and over the right-hand side, and it actually goes... I'm looking to see where my working yarn is here because I don't want to get my working yarn caught or any tails caught in here. <clears throat> so what you do is get my working yarn over there and you just make it completely go into a knot. See how this, this side goes up and over? It almost makes like a U. So... <clears throat> If you look right here, I'm looking for where my working yarn is. When you're doing this, just take your time doing it because you don't want to cause any problems. There's your working yarn right here. So when you get to the part where you've picked up all your stitches all the way to the stitch marker, then you're ready to make this twist and you take your working needle and you would start knitting. Now, mind you, this one is a little loose, and it's because I have a tail behind there that needs to be pulled tighter, but I'll pull it tighter later. For right now, I'm just going to knit it. And you see that I have the stockinette stitch in the front. And <clears throat> she does some decreases, and I just kept it a straight piece of fabric. And then you would go ahead and work across this second bit of stitches, making sure to snug up that first section there. And then all you do is you're knitting it. 
and now you you'll have the front of your T. Now you this right here. See how those tails get? They pulled loose. That was the same thing that happened on this other side over here. So then what you do? <coughs> it's a little bit fiddly. You reach under here where that stitch marker is. You see that red stitch marker is kind of hiding from me. And then you would go right to where those that stitch marker is and go to the very stitch next to it and continue on picking up your stitches. See how I have this rolled forward? And I just continue on picking up the stitches. And you can do this with any top-down design of a T. You can make a knot, oh, excuse me, um, bottom up design because you have to start, you have to do this knot part, part first before you can do the top part. I, unless you, I don't know, you would have to seam it or something like that. And it might be <clears throat> a pain. You can see when I'm picking up stitches that I have the V, I'm picking them up in the same very um, exact row here. So these, you maintain the stitch all the way through. Do you see how that looks straight like that? Yep. Sometimes people might get confused and they, they'll pick up a stitch down here and they'll throw that knit stitch off border. And you gotta be really careful to, to actually just roll the work and make sure that it's flat when you're picking up stitches. And then you can continue that knit stitch all the way along. And it makes it look really nice when you're picking up stitches. And what I like to do, a lot of times they'll say, pick up um, three stitches for every four stitches, uh, for every four rows of your knitting. But I, I prefer, I mean, I don't know what you guys like to do. I like to pick up stitch for stitch. Um, and then if I need to decrease stitches on the first round to get back to what my stitch count should be, then I'll do that. Because I find that if I skip stitches, for instance, if I did this, I skipped that one stitch, I will have kind of a funny looking gap right here. So I don't like to skip them. What I like to do is just decrease them on the first round. Can you guys tell me what you like to do and what works for you? Um, post that in the comment section and you'll be entered to win the prize and then you'll also help me um, get ideas from you as well. See how I've picked up all of the stitches and you can see right here if you spread it out um, that the knit stitch is maintained all along here. And then over, right? yeah and now it's crossed over. You can see here, this right here, there's a little bit of a gap, but when I when I find that tail back here that is loose, I will tighten it up and it'll be perfectly tight after a couple rounds. And you can see that there's a little knot here. It almost like makes like a C going this way and a C going that way, if you think of it that way. Um, just remember when you're knitting these stitches in the back here that you make sure that, see how they're stuck in that stitches right here? I did not let that twist because that sometimes might want to twist to the purl side and then um, your knot won't look as good. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so do you see how this knot, there's now a knot in the front of the work mm -hmm. on this little sample. And um, that's all the pattern does. So let's take a look at her little tutorial that she has. So we started by doing the ribbing in the back. And then you do this section, the long tab like I have on mine, I'm doing the tab, one of these tabs that are going this way, and then I'll do the tab that's going in the other way. And then when the tab is done, you put them, they say to put it on stitch holders, but if you have a long circular, you can just leave those stitches on your live needles, on the cord, mm -hmm. and knit, you know? And then you pick up stitches this way, and then you, you go, you make your knot and go around. So she shows the ribbing in the back, the two sides, picking up stitches along here, avoiding this gap because that's where you're going to make your twist, your little C. And then um, let's take a look at what she shows you on the next page. For you go the right hand side, this right, um, the left hand side goes up and over and it crosses. You can see right here how she, you make a complete cross, right? So that is that right there. 
And then um, number six, then she tells you to put them all on a DPN before you knit. But uh, since I could knit right off the two needles, I would just take these and make it straight. Instead of having the double points cross like that, make them like that and just knit straight off of those. And then you have your knot. And that's how easy it is to do that knot. And you can do it on any t-shirt and it will work um, perfectly um, for um, to make this cute little knot in the front of your tee. I made one in the back too, right? Yeah, you can you can put this in the back or when you're knitting it. It doesn't matter where you put it. I mean, she designed hers so it goes in the front. But what would keep you from being able to put it in the back or on the side? A lot of times when I do my um, tees and I tie them, I don't tie them um, straight in the front right where my tummy is. I put them on the side um, so it doesn't create extra bulk right in the middle of your stomach. It Actually, I would like to put them on the side. So you could even do that if you wanted to. All you have to do is um, when you're making these extra, the, um, the how do you say it, the belt part of it to, that you're going to make into the knot, um, you would have to make one side longer than the other. And if it says knit 20 rows on each side and you decide that you want to make offset yours, you can knit, you know, 30 or 40 rows on one side, knit 10 rows on the other and just make a small knot on the very edge, almost toward the side of your, um, or your body. And it would work great. So you can put it wherever you want. <laughs> you don't have to put it in the back. You could put it just like this little girl's right in the center of the back. Yeah. And just have a solid um, T, you know, that goes because her design is just a round neck in the back. So instead of having it go down like a, a V neck kind of for the back, it would just be a round neck. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> so I was going to read a couple comments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. from Marie, she said that she loves she liked your video on the reverse stockinette bobbles. So you maybe repeat that. Oh, nice. OK. Oh, good. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, so Marie was saying that she would like me to do the um, uh, repeat the video on the reverse stockinette stitch. No, she liked it. She actually, oh, she liked she, it. She, she used oh, good. The and she said it worked. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. On that um, Technique Tuesday, I showed, what was it, uh, three or four different ways to make a bobble. <laughs> and then I showed what they looked like, and then I showed which one I thought I liked the best. And for with baubles, sometimes they can pop through the back of your work, and, and then there's some little techniques that you can do to keep those baubles on the right side of your knitting so that it actually shows. It's a shame to make a bobble that... Um, that looks really cute and then it pops to the back side of your knitting so you don't really see it because it's on the inside of your shirt instead of the outside of your shirt. <laughs> and so Christy, yeah. Christy said she likes the knit club, the, this month's knit club. Oh, club. good. Like awesome. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait one second. I have a few um, little, I didn't bring them all, but Okay, so if this is a small size that I made for myself for the Knit Club project, and what there are is um, felted um, slippers, and I put a lot of thought into making the heel just really nice and rounded and, and, and beautiful, and then I did some work on the toes to make them uh, just super, super nice, and um, then I made my, um, and Jim has already worn these a few times. I don't know where the other one went, but this is the one that I made for Jim. And you can either choose to put the little cuff like this, this cuff on here. It's a cuff that you add after the felting is done. And, or you can choose to just keep them like this because they do feel nice like that, don't you think? And you know what I love these felted, um, slippers for is in the trailer. They're fantastic because, you know, in trailers or uh, motorhome, we, um, space is always um, invaluable in the, the motorhome because we're always looking for um, things that don't take up a lot of space. And these um, slippers are very flat and they don't take up a lot of room and they're super warm. 
So they're like perfect for going in the motorhome. And um, yeah, and and Jim really likes his too. The good thing about the, the felted slippers too for um, men is my husband, when I made him slippers out of the alpaca, he wore a hole in the bottom of the foot. But because these slippers um, are felted, they're stronger. So they should last them longer. <laughs> I think I lost the slipper though. I'll find it though. Uh, yeah, I I don't think I brought brought it with me. It might be in the bottom of the bag somewhere. So, but um, yeah, these turned out nice. So Paula says she likes your hair. Oh, thank you. Oh yeah, I'm using the henna on my hair, so it, it looks kind of a little bit red. That's what henna does. It makes everything red, um, which is cool. It's fine. I don't care. I have a little bit of red in my hair anyway. But I'm doing it because my yeah. hair dye was um is was starting i was starting to get allergic like it would sting my head when i use hair dye so i'm using henna and um henna is like a hair treatment it actually heals your hair and makes your hair feel softer and better after it's done and super shiny right jim mm -hmm. yeah so um anyway um that's what i'm doing with my hair plus i was trying to get it a little back to my normal um color because I've had it uh, highlighted so many times since forever. I don't know. We've done that our, our whole life. Anyway, um, trying to get it back to my natural color so I can just medium brown hair is my natural color unless I go out in the sun a lot. Anyway, all right. So let's look and see who the winner is for this week. Oh, boy. Okay. Sally Burley, you won the purple. If you haven't tried this sueno yet, you are going to love it. So. Tweet, right? Yes, it's called Sueno Tweed, see, by Haiku or Scassel. Um, They're a top quality yarn company, and this yarn is absolutely no exception. It's funny because this yarn can be knit from a, a number three needle all the way up to a number seven needle. So it is very versatile yarn, and it has a nice twist to it and a nice halo after it's blocked. So um, I don't know. It's one of my all-time favorite yarns. I could use it till for the rest of my life. If this was the only yarn that I had left on earth, um, I would be perfectly happy. <laughs> I could just keep knitting with this yarn. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, people who work with me at Alpaca Direct, they're like, can you try something else? I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> anyway, but no, I really like this one. So Sally, all you have to do is make sure and give us your address and we'll send this out in the mail to you and hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I do. Remember, yeah. Remember and uh, yes, and don't forget to vote for this Comfort DK. It is absolutely a great summertime yarn and it's an acrylic, um, how, how, what was that again? It's a 50-50 blend of nylon and acrylic. And it is a great yarn that is not shiny and is so comfortable. It's amazingly quality, amazing quality of yarn for um, for what it is and the price point. It's, you can't find, I'm, it's fantastic. Is it purple and blue? Yes, so we have a choice of purple or blue. So you guys choose and we'll send that out to the winner for next week. So I hope all of you have a great week. I am going to be continuing on with my tea and we can see what I can learn for next week. So I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next Tuesday. <coughs>